All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, wrestlers, non-wrestlers, referees, whatever you are out there, welcome to Suplex Biddies episode 43, presented to you by Couch Guy Sports and sponsored by our friends over at Shocked Energy and Exogun. Guys, you ever feel unable to focus, just tired and low of energy? We understand that feeling. We understand it so well that the Suplex Biddies podcast here is brought to you by Couch Guy Sports and sponsored by our good friends over at Shocked Energy. Shocked Energy is a drink made by gamers for gamers. All their favors come with 148 milligrams of caffeine to ensure that no matter what you're doing, your focus will always be razor sharp to keep you performing at the top of your game. Their formulas are designed to specifically give you high energy boost when you need it most while ensuring to avoid the jitters after too much caffeine consumption. Head over to shockedenergy.com and use their promo code CGSN for 10% off of your order today. Check out their green apple flavor box, their watermelon flavor box, and don't worry, they ship worldwide. That's right, worldwide. Get your shocked energy today and let us help you get your focus and energy back. Speaking of energy and focus, the boys here at Suplex Bitties, Chris Jones, Dave Galvis, Andrew Hyman, have a lot of energy and focus to do today because we got a packed episode for you today. Now we talking about a few things. Yes, Mr. Jones. So we have to talk to our guy that runs the YouTube channel because I don't, I didn't know that the number forty-two came after forty-six. That's a f- Oh, Jesus Christ. So, so it's, it's episode 47. There we go. No, episode it's episode 47. four. Nope. Last week is 47. This week is 48. Uh, sir, after 46 is 47. Yes. And this episode on the YouTube page is episode 42. Oh, you're saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the week I before is 46. I so, I yeah. So that guy. Yeah. So, so the guy. Yeah. So the guy. So whoever does the YouTube channel, we have to have a little, little discussion with them. That's all. Yeah, that, that guy would be me. Just go ahead and, and call me out. That's fine. You, you don't need to go. I, I wasn't trying to. I was trying to make it seem like we were the big deal. And we had Jones, someone that wasn't a, you it, doing Jones, it. Jones, Jones, Jones. It's okay. It's okay. This isn't WWE. We got a guy. We got a This isn't WWE. This isn't Congress. This is Couch Guy Sports. Welcome yeah. to welcome to transparency.com. You can call me out anytime. That's fine. So it was me. It's stupid me. Um, you know, I... I almost failed uh, first grade a few times, so 46, you know, immediately kick us back to 42. So that's what it is. What it is, we want to stay young in the game. So I, I circle back to 42. It was just such a perfect episode for us. But um, in regards to perfection, you know. high energy, this stupidity. Let's get into the stupidity of our show here, and um, let's get talking because we got a lot to talk about today. We got um, got some suggestions from our. Um, Horst voice co-host, uh, Mr. Andrew Hunneman, with, uh, with with some topics to talk about, which is the uh, title unification match, which uh, WWE and their, their stupidity, it's talk about stupidity.com, um, AEW Revolution, and we got to be talking about the McAfee versus Vince McMahon rumors. So, Jones, since you called me out, since you're feeling gutsy today, I'm going to let you go ahead and pick the first topic of the night. Uh, so the first topic of the night will be none other than um, Vince McMahon versus Pat McAfee. All right, let's talk about Pat McAfee, Mr. Imperfections. Uh, which, by the way, it's it, it, I, I absolutely love that we're talking about between the robes, but you're staying between the lines with a soccer shirt on, which I, I just don't understand it. But anyways, um, let's talk about the... the McAfee versus uh, Vince McMahon rumors. Let's get talking. Let's get talking, sir. I was seeing about the okay. McAfee versus McMahon. <laughs> yes, agreed. I made an effort to mispronounce it because I wanted to catch you off guard. No, you like, didn't catch me off guard because I, I just I, I, I'm i used to it. It does sound like Pisano. If Pisano's listening, Hahnemann said Pisano. You can't hear him because I'm trying to talk. <laughs> Drink some water. What I do you do? Clearly not enough. Well, do your mic, goggle it a little bit, and then suck that thing down. Guys, <laughs> I, 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 I do want to share one thing with you guys real quick. Go ahead. 
That is, I always dreamt of talking to ET, and I get to do that tonight. Oh no, that's the, <laughs> that's the thing. There's <laughs> the light. I can't see the light. So the the e. rumor. E. What do we think? <laughs> I just, I think again, it's going to be the reality. We're going to see Austin Theory versus Pat McAfee. Vince is Vince and McAfee are going to butt heads. And it's going to lead to Vince saying, okay, well, you're going to face one of my guys. And out comes Austin Theory. And then, boom, Austin Theory is now on the WrestleMania card against Pat McAfee. Or is it smoke and mirrors and it's Cody that comes out? I don't think Cody would be a Vince McMahon guy off, off the bat. If you want him to be a heel and a big deal, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I like the idea though. He's definitely he shouldn't he shouldn't be competing. There's no way. Wait, hold on, Diego. I got a perfect response for when Hanan talks now. I'm gonna go ahead and talk. What? (laughs) What? (laughs) What? (laughs) It sounds like Stone Cold. What? (laughs) Vodka? What? Whiskey? What? In the the season, I got I got to sound like him. (laughs) Yeah, I just I don't think we're gonna get. It's gonna turn into a rivalry where. They, who knows? They might go the angle where they did with Donald Trump and they, they both pick a champion. And maybe it's Austin Theory for Vince and then maybe Cody for Pat McAfee. You know, it's just little things like that. There's different avenues that they can go, but I think the it's clear that Vince is not stepping in the ring. He shouldn't. He's 76. Because yeah. the last, last time he was technically in a match was 2010 against Bret Hart. And they basically did the same thing where they had somebody perform. Uh, all Bret Hart did was be in with a chair the whole time. Go, what do you think? Personally, I think personally, I think this is just, just stupidity to be done over and over again. Um McAfee, as we know, he's he's well spoken and all that. So he'll definitely be a, a a hell of an entertainer, but to see Vince back in the ring, it's probably actually just as bad of an idea as anything else, considering uh, the latest turmoil within WWE, releasing superstars, not extending the contract to Cesaro, letting it expire, having no creativity whatsoever for somebody like Asuka, who is such a contributor to WWE. Um, I just think in overall, it's just actually more of a punch me in the face moment to Vince McMahon than anything else. Um, probably not a good idea to have it be done and over with, but if this, if this is the route they want to go, it is the, the route they want to go. Um, if we if we look at things, if we look at the aspect of things too, let, let, let's get into the unification match, which I, I have a theory behind it, but I want to get some thoughts first. So I'm going to go with Hahnemann to start off. All right. Well, I'm What's curious up? about your theory. Yeah, okay. we want me to, what do you want me to uh, say I'll, about I'll, I'll wrap up the segment with my theory, but let's get started with, with Hunterman. But what if we say what your theory sir, is? Sir, 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 I'm the host tonight. Let's not disrespect sir. the host. Sorry, sir. my mistake. Mr. Hunterman, go right ahead. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I think it's it's been talked about for a few months now that this is my nightmare scenario and it's finally happening. And this is really hard to talk. <laughs> Can you guys even hear me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I swear I'm not cutting a promo. <laughs> oh, I hate it. Uh, the reports that were coming out today was that there's still going to be two champions. So they're going to unify the two belts, much like back in 2002 when they unified the belts. And then Raw is going to get a new champion, depending on if it's Roman or Brock, I should say. I mean, I think we all want to see the world heavyweight title come back. The big gold belt. That would be lovely. I'm sure they'll come out with the new design and just make it something ridiculous. But I like it. That's the only good thing that I'd like to see out of it. I just, I hate the match. Hate, hate, hate. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Now let's head, let's head over to Mr. Jones. What, what, hmm. are, what are your thinking over here? Made me th- <laughs> Oh. Hunnaman, Hunnaman, Hunnaman. Just put that, this lovely idea in my head. 
So obviously Roman's going to win. There's no way in, in the lightning of God that Brock Lesnar is going to win at WrestleMania. Not a chance. Yes, God has lightning. You're talking about <laughs> Zeus? No, whatever. He's from the other <laughs> mythology. Ah. <laughs> but what's going to happen is the night after WrestleMania, this is what's going to happen. Hear me out here. So they're going to debut a new champion. But what's going to happen is it's going to be on literally that night. It'll be, let's see, Seth Rollins or Bobby Lashley, one of those two, versus mystery opponent. You know who the mystery opponent is going to be? Cody Rhodes. That's when he debuts. Boom. Cody Rhodes versus whoever, one of those two. Boom. Cody wins the title, and then boom, you're, you're right there. WrestleMania backlash, baby. I like it. Okay. Okay. What's so, the name of the title going to be? Let's, let's. That's the thing I'm wondering because if you're going to unify the WWE title, you're gonna, are you going to call it the WWE Universal title or just the Universal title? It's got to be something because it's I think the belts are too similar looking. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. You need a unique you belt. Want, you need distinction. You need vari- variety. I can't tell you. <laughs> Variance. <laughs> we need this. Come back with this right here. This. Nice. Bring this back. Just as good as the DVD player. <laughs> or even, you know what, Hanuman? I'll accept this. I'll accept this. I'll accept this. You know why? Because it's not, it doesn't have the WWE logo. It's right all over it. They have to paste it in like 72 size font, though. That's their whole thing. Has to say WWE. Or turn our belt back. Or if that's John Cena's 17th championship. Now I'm just thinking the things. Well, it's, it's exciting that they're seemingly going to still have two champions because it felt like just a horrible idea. And what we said before was that you had USA Network and Fox that you have to make come to agreement. Like they're not going to want to share a champion, they're going to want their own distinctive world champion. So that's why I thought it was dumb. Go ahead. Could be your USA Network champion or something stupid. No. I'd rather it be the sci fi champion. Honestly, yeah. All right, Diego. Now, the real question Did we say your theory? Not at all. Oh, he has a theory. What's your theory? Is it Austin theory? My theory is that you should get a voice and get get some honey in that throat. But I mean, we I'm all know what you swallow. You swallow some things. Oh, I'm sorry. Than, than um, not, my fault. Gotta stop. Gotta stop hanging out away from Ariel. Um, but anyways, my theory is the following: For a while now, we've seen WWE go in this warpath of cutting staff, cutting the roster, cutting the budget, uh, not extending deals. Their deal with with Fox continues to be in turmoil. Uh, Their deal with the USA Network is also in turmoil. I think at this point, what we're seeing is a potential integration of the shows all together. So we're going to be able to see NXT stay in its, in its own night that it, that it currently stays in, but we're going to see Raw and SmackDown integrate into just one three long hour show that will actually be heavily entertaining. And this is why we're seeing a title unification match. If you look at the roster right now, the roster for SmackDown is extremely slim. If you look at the roster for Raw, it's extremely slim as well. I don't know what Jones is doing, but that image, it it, it's got to be extremely disturbing for our YouTube viewers. Um, it's going to be disturbing as disturbing as Hunman's voice, but, you know, yeah, it's fine. It's not, it's not good. I'd rather listen Epi- to Raspy voice four- than look at all that. 48. Episode 48, the, the disturbing episode. The disturbance, Diego, yeah. I, I just want to, I want to know. So if you think they're going to end the brand split, bring everybody together, what happens to your five hours of TV? You said it's just going to be three hours? It's going to be three hours of TV. They're going to let go of one of the networks because the deal is just too expensive. Right now, right now, if you look at it, if you look at it internally from 
a financial standpoint, they can't afford to extend their deal with Fox. They can't. They will need to go after far more sponsorships. They will need to bring back some of the talent that they already released, which means extending new contracts, hiring new people, which hiring process anywhere that you go is extremely expensive and having to do some updating of their policies. That's going to be so expensive that at the end of the day, the end product just doesn't seem to match up. Didn't, didn't they get... Oh, they... And, and on top of that, and on top of that, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the low-hanging fruit from both of these shows make the transition over to NXT. So NXT can also get an expanded hour. And overall, you see the talent be utilized to its full potential. That's the, so I like the I kind of I understand where you're coming from, but doesn't Fox pay them like isn't it two billion dollars or something like that over the next five years when they start? Have you it? seen Have you seen the amount of money that they have let go of from from all this talent? It surpasses a two billion tab. Yeah, we all think it's to sell. Well, it's not a tab. It's not a tab though. I don't think I'm not a network head. I just don't think that's how it works. It, um, it's not don't. how it works. But also think about it. Think about it from this way too. Contracting all of these additional venues to be able to sponsor both of these additional shows. Then over to NXT, contracting new venues as well. Selling tickets, making sure that all of these shows are sold out, which have not been sold out. Being able to give the people new creative ideas. They have not been able to do that. In a way, you kind of need to cut your losses really, really short and start profiting somehow. This is the year that they're going to need to net profiting. I mean, every every time they have a quarterly earnings report, it's always, and we made another 200 million or another 250 million. So we, I, I could see it. I mean, they got to do something. And as, as stacked not as to be, this roster was. Over, not to be Mr. Politics or anything here. But let's not forget that Goldman Sachs also declared that they were winning. They were, they were making all these earnings at one point. In, in their in their you know longevity of business and coming to find out one of those reports was absolutely fake as shit. Are you trying to tell me Vince McMahon's lying to me? <laughs> Would it put it back? Vince McMahon's been lying to you for 40 years. <laughs> Vince McMahon also released his son from Vince McMahon released his son from working in the company. Do you think that lying about his budget is beneath him? No. So I, mean, I, I own stock in WWE and it's still climbing. Listen, listen, day. listen. He had a match with God. You're telling me. He You're telling God. me. Do you think he's lying to you? He beat God. Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Yep. But no, I mean, hey. listen, at, at, this, at this rate, if you're just going to expand the show, call Tony Khan and just be like, hey, can you? Can we go? Can we go halves? At, at that rate, I mean, but I don't know. There, there's no way that they're gonna. I think what you could see is I think you could see them moving away from USA and talking to Fox. Be like, hey, we need a a, a slot here on Monday night. Maybe they cut down from three to two hours on Monday nights and go over the, the Fox full time. That I think I could see more realistically than them combining two shows because there's no way they get rid of SmackDown and my thinking put them all is on if Raw, they were to do opinion. something where they cut back on TV time is that Raw would go to Peacock because they're owned by NBC anyway. That's, I believe that's disgusting. Deep. That's a terrible idea, but you have you get it off TV, you don't have to worry about the sponsorships and keeping them happy. And you can kind of do the cross promoting and it's it's with they're with Peacock, I think, for four or five years. When that contract got announced, so. just go back to the network. Man. This the is network is so much better, dude. It's wild. It's so fucking wild. It's gross. It's at WWE and Peacock yeah. is disgusting. There's no chapters. You go to you go no. to a, a four hour pay per view. You have to fucking go through segments and try to stop at the one you want to find. They used to mm-hmm. have bullet points and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Sucks. Listen, I just I just stopped my. My watch a lot because it just got to the point where I can't watch it yeah. on Peacock. Yep, it's ridiculous. Um, but no, there's de- definitely different avenues that they can go. I just don't 
necessarily see them going the one that you think they're going to head in Diego personally. It, it's not, if it's not a vision do, that you need to see. It's not a vision that you need podcast. to see right away. I will come on this podcast. That's fine. Um, if, if that happens and they cut down to it, one, three hour show a week where the, they're both together, I will personally do a podcast at your house. And for 35 minutes, I will do nothing but, but kiss your feet and do whatever the fuck you say. Who said I allow you down. in my house? Write that down. I want write it down. Who said I'd allow you in my house? First of all. And second of all, Michelle. Who said I would allow you anywhere near my feet? I hate feet. That's how that's that's how confident I am that your idea won't happen. And I hate your mouth. Why would I put my feet in your it let anywhere near your mouth? It's nasty. That's nasty. I mean, is it Tuesday? Sounds like a controversy day. But anyways, uh, Hanman, Hanman, you got to put that hood down, dude. It doesn't oh, look right. Yeah, it doesn't, it look, doesn't look right. Yeah, it doesn't look good with the light. You're oh. right. Sorry. Oh. It doesn't look good. Uh, but moving on. Moving on from WWE. Let's move over to AW. What, what a precious McGee over there fucking choke on. He doesn't cut <laughs> Yes. What are you almost just choke on? Don't Air, worry about it. Just Air move on. Comedy. Air and comedy, baby. That's what we love. That's a WWE. I don't see anything funny about that. No, it, it wasn't you. Oh, God. All right. Let's move over to AEW and Revolution. So, Mr. AEW himself, Mr. Honeyman, why, why no. don't you go ahead and, and, and kick us on since you want to be Mr. Ho so bad, but your voice. I know you voice said I did. Not helping you. You know what? I was happy to contribute more. Let's get let's get let's get you talking about AEW, shall we, sir? Please proceed with AEW. If you have this, I'm gonna hold my phone up and scroll through Wikipedia and show you what the mass the matches. That's not what a host would do. AEW Revolution. You are correct, and I am not this week. Hold on, you're chosen to be. I have the match list right here. Would you like me to go over? Yes, yes, Mr. Jones. Please proceed. Considering you know our attempt at being horsed is not going very well. Oh, should I just quit? Is that what's going on? Should I quit on the spot? Will that get us ratings? Can I leave? (laughs) Yes, I want to. I don't care if you want to or not. This is this is content you're doing. This is not. This is a lot of negotiation tactic that I'm pulling right here. This hurts. All right, so let's go. Let's go into. Let, the let's card. proceed with the card real quick. Yeah, hold on. First match for the AEW TBS Championship, we have champion Jade Cargill versus Ty Conti. What do we think? I already know Diego's pick. So, how many more? No, you don't. Why don't you go? Yes, I do. What's your pick? Go ahead. Yeah, what, what's Diego, my pick? No, no, no. Diego's what's my pick? Is, it's it's Ty Conti. You are so wrong. You are so wrong. Holy crap! You didn't even Tell have a wrong. chance. Even if even if you got it right, he could have just said the other one. So no, no, actually, no. I know it, it, he's trying it was to never escape the rest of us. It's not happening. I know. Why do you think I'm sitting there he's like screwed. this? It's not Conti by any means. It's Cargill. Honestly, Honeman, take- you might you might just go as a Vince McMahon impersonator with that. I don't think so. <laughs> All right, Diego. No Jake Cargill, Ty Conti, who's it going to be? I just said it. Maybe if you were listening, instead of sucking Harvey Dent's cock over there, that would have been great. Whoa, that's, whoa, that's whoa. Fine. I'm not too famous. My voice just doesn't work. No, but you do sound like you do sound like Harvey Dent over there. Oh, I, I, after, I play, after the I play my own luck. Hits or tails. I don't know. I'm in my I think you're be, I think, be in the Hobbit at this rate. I think you're mixing up villains, bro. <laughs> nah. I think, you're ma- I think you're mixing up villains. Nah, you just don't know who Harvey Dent is. It's a, it's okay. Uh, Jake Cargill retains the title. I don't want to be here anymore. I think Hunterman could be in the Hobbit movie with that voice. <laughs> and, and play who? I have it right here. Just, Guys, get fun. back to wrestling. Get back to wrestling. Oh, wow, I'm trying to get... <laughs> <laughs> Try to get the happiness on Hunterman here. Hunterman, Jade Cargill or Ty Conti? Jade Cargill. Ty Conti just got thrown into this program like yesterday. There's no way she's going to win. 
that's the one thing AEW does is they get really close to their pay-per-views and then they just toss people in that don't quite have matches yet. It's stupid. And yeah, but Jay Cargo's, undefe- Jay Cargo's undefeated. He's got to lose sometime. Yeah, it's not this time. I'm going to go Ty Conti. Fuck you. Okay. You think TBS would rather market Jade Cargo at the moment or take no. Conti? Okay. Take Conti. Jade she Cargo hits- got, she's got the green hair now. It's pretty good. Mm. Doesn't do it for me. I like the storm air better, but that's just me. I don't know. I don't think she's hot. And she has tits. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think Diego's <laughs> Next one. Next one. We have a six man tornado tag team match. Marco. Polo. <laughs> well, you'll shut up and just fucking Polo. continue. <laughs> Polo. <laughs> <laughs> we have a six-man tornado tag team match between uh, AHFO, which is Andrade, Matt Hardy, and Isaiah Cassidy versus Tim. Why is this a poopoo match? Trash. There's no point in having it. If Matt, it's, Matt Hardy's going to be with his brother in two weeks. And okay. then, that means there's no, there's no TNT. Title defense. Well, because there's a face of the revolution ladder. Let's still defend the belt. Yeah, they'll defend it on TV. I just so I guess for this match, when they did the little backstage segment with Matt Hardy, it just was it was really bad. It just looked really scripted and like they were just like, Hey, by the way, we're putting this on the cards to so do a quick 30 second spot. Well, and I was just like, I think don't, of it I don't like get it why we're doing this. Because it's called storytelling, my friend. It's going to go from AHFO to AFO because Hardy's going to knock it off because he's going to go with his brother. Yeah. How, why, why not do it at a pay-per-view? Well, because Jeff can't debut. Where it could be a record buy. <laughs> Jeff can't debut allegedly to like later in that week. But they yeah. could lose and then turn on Matt setting yes, up. That's, mm-hmm. so why do you have, cool. to have a six-man tag? Because you need to have Sting on the car. It's Sting. Okay. Sammy Guevara, Sting, and Darby yeah, Allen. That's who's going to win. Absolutely. Yeah, we're talking about wrestling. What are you mad about now? The fuck? I didn't know it was sitting over there. to me, you jackass. No, you're just sitting there all mad. I'm listening to you ramble. Can I, can I I'm listening to you ramble. For somebody that doesn't have a lot of Thank voice, you. you're rambling and going on. So just continue I'm to try- ramble. You just, you, dude, you put me on the spot five minutes ago. Ramble. Continue to ramble. Holy I'm hell. Good. I'm good. Controversy episode. It's not really. I think this kid's being a dickhead. <laughs> Carry on. Me being a dickhead doesn't mean your mom gets, is getting late tonight. So let's move on from that. Um, what does that even mean? That I may just put myself it inside sounds, your mom. You could. I mean, if you I really could. want to, she, she's like 62. Oh, You're even better. Bed. Okay. She's in shape. So good for you, man. She's a good woman. As long as she wasn't, I think Jones is contemplating how that one worked too, as am I. But see, you said it a lot. <laughs> you guys have a great episode. See us. <laughs> okay. So what, uh, what was the next one? Hold on, get it in my ear. Okay, Diego likes Sammy Guevara, Sting, and Darby Allen too. Got it. Cool. Okay, next like one. Yeah. No, no brain. We have Chris Jericho versus Eddie Kingston, which we saw coming. But in Eddie Kingston's corner is going to be Santana and Ortiz. Interesting. What are you saying for that one? You go first because I got to think about that one. I, I have a weird feeling this is, this is an Eddie Kingston overmatch, and I think Eddie Kingston wins this game. Win, wins this game. I think Eddie Kingston wins this match. He wins he, the game. <laughs> he wins the game. The game of fucking with Chris Jericho. Well, you know the game, right? Have you heard of the game? Yeah, but that's you only a game. different program. You know, no, the, the, no, the game where you, you hear about the game, you're playing the game. Yeah. But, but then you lose the game if someone talks about the game and someone says game. Remember that? Yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> like, I'm like, but everyone just lost the game. Shut up and fucking talk about the match. <laughs> I think Eddie Kingston gets his big win because that was the whole promo behind uh, Jericho. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was just saying, you know, when it comes down to it, you never get the big one. So here we are, the big one. 
and Jericho can easily put him over. And mm-hmm. now Inner Circle can fall apart. He can go do his own thing. We'll see what that is. And it'll be it'll be a good match, though. It'll be two vets, fantastic storytelling, good psychology, and you're good. I'm excited for it. All right, let's go into the three-way tag team match for the AEW World Tag Team Titles. Oh, I'm sorry. Diego's back in the studio. Diego, hello. Hello, hello. What, what are your what thoughts are you? on Chris Jericho versus Eddie Kingston? Eddie Kingston. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let's go over to the three-way tag team match for the AEW World Tag Team Champions. We have Jurassic Express defending right now against Red Dragon and then an opponent to be named as of this week for on Dynamite with the Tag Team Battle Royal. Battle Royal, yeah. So what are we thinking? It feels like storyline-wise, it's going to end up being the Young Bucks unless they get screwed over in this Battle Royal, obviously. But it seems like you're going to have that three-way dance. And I think Jurassic Express is not past their expiration date yet. So I'm going to go with them. Well, I think if you're doing the Bucks and the Red Dragon as the the other two teams, I think they're just going to beat the crap out of each other. What? Oh, what? sorry. You were what? just cutting out. You were just cutting out. Sorry. That's an Red Dragon. Write it down. Red, Red Dragon and the Young Bucks. If they're going at it, it's going to set up their feud. And if Jurassic Express is going to win, they're going to win because one of them is going to get real close, a.k.a. the Red Dragon or the Young Bucks. And then Jurassic Express is just going to go <laughs> toss them over and then win. Okay. Yeah. What do you think, Diego? The uh, people that are going to go, <laughs> Jurassic Express could win this. Yes. Love it. Constant, Same I like it. Same boat. <laughs> it's a sound bit. <laughs> yeah. Next one, uh, Daniel Danielson, John Moxley. Hmm. What do we think? Time of a draw. I'm going with Moxley. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> I'm going Danielson. This is, this think is Danielson, it's a tough This one. would be a, it'd be a significant win for Danielson. And I think what it does is it puts him back in uh, world title contention, especially if Adam Cole is going to win the title. After he lost to Hangman, he mm-hmm. kind of needs a win because he's he's beaten and cumber <clears throat> guys. But mm-hmm. the whole the whole point of this match is Brian Danielson trying to get Moxley to become a team. So if he beats him, Moxley can say, oh, "Okay, maybe I do need this guy to get back up on top." Maybe maybe they both bleed. And Moxley just goes, yep, that's it. That's my guy. He did say he wanted to bleed together, so there you go. All right. What about the dog call match? CM Punk and MJF. MJF had a real different kind of promo this past week. That's mm-hmm. really good. He's very good at the, the talking on the microphone. He's got a good voice. What do we think? What do we think? Uh, I'm going to go CM Punk just because I think – I think that's how it has to go, but it, it really is such a toss up, especially after it's almost like you're, they're setting up for a double turn with how his promo was last week. And you don't get those very often. And when you do, it's very, very exciting. So I say punk for now. I'm going to go MJF. I think he's beaten punk before, but I think he needs that big pay-per-view win over punk. And then next thing you know, he could be in the world heavyweight title push as well. I think him versus, him versus Hangman, right? Mm. Ah. I think this is a storyline for them to have in a dis, an additional match after this. Probably like a like a rubber match or anything like that coming up. I do think CM Punk could win it though. So I'm going with CM Punk. Isn't this technically the rubber match or is this is it's this number so, two? No, it's, I think it's this is number two. I think it's number two. Okay. So you, if, if Punk wins too, then he can go back to that rubber match at some point mm-hmm. on a special. Because the up. first one, the first one, MJF won it with the help of um, Wardlaw. Yeah, so. with the ring. Right. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Speaking of Wardlow, let's get into the Face of the Revolution ladder match for a future okay. shot at the AEW TNT Championship. You have Keith Lee, Wardlow, Powerhouse mm-hmm. Hobbs, Absolute Ricky Starks, Orange Cassidy, and then To Be Determined. What do you think? Yeah, I'm kind of wondering who the to be determined is going to be. 
because Buddy Murphy already showed up, or Buddy mm-hmm. Matthews, as he goes by now. He's with House of Black. So of people in the match, I think it's still going to go to Keith Lee. For now, even though I don't necessarily think he's the best choice. I think it's, I think it's going to be Wardlow. It could progress that storyline with MJF. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Remember what we keep saying. MJF says, well, when you win that title, I'll cash in my contract and you can just hand me the belt. Thanks, buddy. Mm-hmm. Yep. We'll see. I just thinking about who it could be the, to be determined. I mean, Swerve Scott. That's the one. That's got to be the special. Yeah. He could be. Well, I mean, Khan has a big announcement on Wednesday, too. So there's several different things that could happen up until this point. Allegedly, the rumor is that the, the big announcement is not anyone, like, no signing. It might be, like, programming-based or, like, the trio's titles, finally. So they're saying it's not a free agent signing for once. <laughs> it's something else. Maybe they do a trios like thing at the pay per view. Yeah, that could be. Maybe they maybe they make that first. Uh, that six man with Matt Hardy in them for the six man title. Uh, maybe not with uh, maybe. Sammy already having the title. Maybe they go in an avenue where they get Pac and what's his face Penta. Uh, versus Phoenix versus uh, House of yeah. Black. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That could be it. Yeah, that could be good. That's an, I mean, that's a nice idea. And I think uh, the, uh, the, the dream match with that trio's title is going to be Omega and the Bucks versus Undisputed Era. Or whatever they end up going by. Red Dragon. Point. So Red Dragon, yeah, with Adam Cole mm-hmm. and Brandon Cutler. Dave, D- D- what do you think? For the Revolution match, I'm going to go with Keith Lee as well. I think it's 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 an early stage where he's still in that baby promo phase for AEW and where they've made such a big push to get him. Um, mm-hmm. I think this is just an additional push to to add to his brand within the program, but not well, like, it's, not like my, it's a deserving win. Right, no. Well, I think my big thing is I think we could see someone coming out and costing Keith Lee that way setting up his next feud Mm -hmm. and that way you can get him on TV with that rather than just put him right into the title feud. Mm -hmm. Like maybe, Oh, I don't know. Hunterman. There's a, there's a guy I'm thinking about. He hasn't been uh, around quite much lately. He would make a bang of a match. Is it, is it when, no, it's not actually. Rotunda. Oh, oh. Miro. You know, oh, that's a good. But, that's a really. He could be your special sixth. You know who could also be your special sixth. Let's not forget that Cesaro not extending his contract with AEW, with a WWE, leaves him to have an open contract negotiation with anybody. Who's to say that <laughs> AEW didn't just go? Holy crap! It's Cesaro. Let's get him in here. Very true. I forgot. My- I always forget that he's just a free agent. Mm-hmm. My only thing with that is I feel like and Cesaro's ready. Cesaro's fit to be wrestling. So I I don't disagree with it, but I think personally he's still waiting on WWE. I think him and WWE are still gonna re- rework a contract and then he'll be back after WrestleMania. I would like to think I don't that's think the it's case. good for him, but I that's what that's what my thought process is. I would like to going. think that's the case, but to be honest with you, the way that the way that this was all left out, he was quoted saying that one of his dream matches was to have a match with Roman Reigns. He's already had it a few years ago. In Vince McMahon's eyes, if his dream is already covered, why should I go after a contract extension over somebody that's going to cost me a lot to get back in? AEW has the money. Might as well go for AEW. If I was yeah. Zara, I'd make that move uh, right away. We'll see. That's another one. I don't know. Definitely this coming Sunday, it's going to be fantastic to watch. Yeah, very much. For sure. All right. What about the AEW women's title? Britt Baker versus Tonda Rosa. Rosa. Yeah. This is Rosa. This is, this, is, this is her time, man. Yeah. Yep, yep. I agree. I think everyone's this barred is, from ringside. She's been champ. Baker's been champ for, what, seven, eight months now? Time for a change. Yeah. Rosa. Baker. Britt Baker has been the champ for... 274 days. Pretty good. 
Since May, since May 30th. Yeah, so about seven months. Mm-hmm. Good for her. That's a good run. Yeah. It's a good no, run. No, it, it, it's been a good run. I just, I don't see how Thunder Rosa loses this one. It makes too much sense to be Great. the next in line. And then which which means that this is WWE, Britt Baker would be retained. Right. Yes. Of course. Of course. Britt Baker will <laughs> be the char- their Charlotte uh, Flair. Flair. Of AW. Mm-hmm. So much better. Britt Baker so much, so much better, better too. Britt. All right. Who's better on the mic, Charlotte Flair or Britt Baker? Oh, Britt. Britt, a thousand years. I say Charlotte. I say Charlotte. I, I love Britt Baker on the mic, dude. I don't since know. She, Charlotte on the she mic. Turned heel, she's definitely a plus game, but I think Charlotte edges that out. She's just Charlotte, being an asshole. Charlotte yeah. was the. What was the name of the black guy on Eight Mile that was undefeated for a while until Eminem showed up on the mic? Papa Doc. Yeah, yeah Charlotte Flair is the Papa Doc of WWE, while Britt Baker is the Eminem, just ready to throw bombs. All right, All right last one. AW World Title. We got Hangman Page versus Britt Baker's boyfriend, aka Adam Cole, baby. Oh, it's a battle keep of the sh- Adams, right? Keep it short. Adam keep it sweet. Adam. Adam Cole, baby. I'm saying Hangman. I hope Hangman. Yeah, I'm saying Hangman Adam. retains. Adam Cole, baby. I just I don't think it's Adam Cole's. He'll be he'll be an AEW World Champion, mm-hmm. just not yet, not yet. All right, that do, that does it Amen. for episode Too 43, 47, 42, whatever, whatever, whatever 42. it is. I, I love how Jones all of a sudden is the host again. Yeah. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, well, I, thank you so much. I don't much. know. You disappeared. You disappeared on the broadcast. So who knows? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for having tuned into episode forty-seven of the. Suplex Biddies, or 48 at this point, because we just don't know how to count. In reality, it's actually episode 48. With that said, signing off is Diego Galvez, Chris Jones, Andrew Hahnemann. Make sure to check out couchguysports.com. Until next week, see you guys all again very soon.